All right, this is a video to explain a couple problems that the azimuthal equidistant projection, or the AE map, has uh, that prevent it from being an accurate map of the world. Um, the AE map is used by a lot of flat earthers. Uh, many of them believe it is an accurate representation of the Earth, as if a, a balloon could go up high enough into the atmosphere or up into space uh, with a camera and point the camera downward back at the North Pole and take a picture, that this is the picture that that balloon could take. Now, there's a couple of problems with that hypothesis. I'm not going to get into those. But I want to use this idea of this being a snapshot of the Earth from high enough up, an accurate map of the Earth. Um, the problem with that idea is that the azimuthal equidistant projection is a projection that does a couple things right and a lot of things wrong. Uh, Wikipedia says about the azimuthal equidistant projection that all points on the map are at proportionally correct distances from the center point and that all points on the map are at the correct azimuth direction or angle from the center point. Uh, the article on map projections when it talks about azimuthal projections uh, it goes into a little more detail. An azimuthal equidistant projection shows distances and directions accurately from the center point, but distorts shapes and sizes elsewhere. And this is the problem, one of the problems that we're going to see, that it distorts shapes and sizes. If we go back and we look at this map, uh, we're going to see that it distorts sizes and shapes below the equator, further away from the North Pole. Um, much more drastically, the north of the equator, near the North Pole. And I want to use a, a simple example. We're going to go, uh, this is the prime meridian here. So this is 90 degrees. This is 75. This is 105. Okay. Now this red line is the equator. This is 15 south. This is 30 south. So if we were to go from 30 degrees south of the equator at 105 degrees... Uh, of longitude, and we were to trek across Australia 15 degrees of longitude to 120 degrees longitude. If we if we trekked that distance, uh, we could get a mileage for it. Um, if we were using, for example, uh, yardsticks or or something, something that we could keep track of the distance we traveled. Okay, so we travel a certain amount of distance here across Australia. Now let's say we also go not 30 degrees south of the equator, but 30 degrees north of the equator. And we do it somewhere closer to home, for me at least. Uh, we go to the United States. And we're going to go at 30 degrees north of the equator from 90 degrees west to 105 degrees west. We're still going 15 degrees of longitude, but we're doing it north of the equator, 30 degrees north of the equator versus 15 degrees of longitude at 30 degrees south of the equator. Now on this projection, on this map, it doesn't take much to notice visually that the distance between this point and this point, whether curved or straight, and the distance between this point and this point, whether curved or straight, those distances are not equal. The reason being that this length is closer to the acute angle of the triangle and this distance is further from the acute angle of the triangle. As two sides of a triangle spread out, the distance between those two sides of the triangle increases. So that would mean if you were to travel this distance um, from Louisiana into Mexico, that distance would be shorter if this map is accurate, that distance would be shorter than the distance you traveled the same 15 degrees of longitude, 30 degrees south of the equator in Australia. Unfortunately, this does not match reality. Now, I'm going to use Google Maps uh, as my evidence here, but I would challenge people who, who naysay that uh, to, find, to find a way to verify these with distances north and south of the equator, the same degrees north of the equator as south of the equator, and the same angle of traversal of the Earth. 
In my example, it's 15 degrees of longitude. So here is Google Maps. This is uh, the US transit. And you can see here the distance, and this is 90 degrees west, uh, 30 degrees north. And this is 105 degrees west and 30 degrees north. First of all, you might notice that line curves a little bit. Okay. Um, it is 196.85 miles. That's what Google says this distance is. Now, if we go to Australia and we go 30 degrees south of the equator, and we start here, and I believe it was 120 degrees east, and we go to 135 degrees east, the distance is 896.91. So we have 897 versus also 897. There's a distance of 0 0.06 miles right here. Um, if kilometers are your thing, it's a distance of just, it looks like 0 0.1 meter. Uh, 0.1 kilometer, okay? So very small margin of error. Google says that these distances are essentially the same. This distance here and this distance here, Google says are the same on Earth. So if Google is correct, and this is an easily verifiable experiment, all you would need to do is actually have somebody measure these distances as a human, um, then this would indicate that the AE map fails to represent sizes correctly because 15 degrees of size here and 15 degrees of size, uh, 15 degrees of distance here and 15 degrees of distance here are not the same on an AE map, but they are apparently the same on the actual Earth. Now, another problem with the AE map with lines of uh, latitude. Um, comes in when you're looking uh, to travel, let's say, due east. Uh, I watched a video uh, with Jaronism recently, um, and he explained that on a globe, on the globe, um, if you make a line uh, due east from somewhere, it doesn't go along the line of latitude that you're looking at. Um, actually, you know, on the globe, a straight uh, a, a, a a line at 90 degrees heading what you would call due east doesn't go straight like you might think it actually bends towards the equator and this happens in the north hemisphere and it happens in the south hemisphere so a person right here if they're looking due east from their location their line of sight if they could see that far would eventually hit the equator and it just so happens from this specific location, it would hit the equator at the prime meridian. Same thing for somebody uh, in equal uh, in equal distance below the equator at that same point. If they were out here in the ocean and they looked due east, they their line of sight would take them to the equator at the prime meridian. Now that happens because these are at ninety degrees uh, ninety degrees west of the prime meridian. Now. What's interesting about this is the only place on the globe where if you wanted to look 90 degrees... Oh, okay, so what I was trying to highlight about this is, um, so you think you're looking 90 degrees, you think you're looking east, but as you go along this line of sight, from each of the individual places along this line, you're not looking... If you started there, you wouldn't be at a 90 degree heading. Um, and what this means is for the flat earth map, the azimuthal equidistant map, is if you started, let's say here, and you wanted to travel uh, perfectly east, you would have to continually check your compass and make corrections. Every step you took, you need to make sure you're still headed due east from where you're standing right now. If you took out your compass here, pointed yourself east, put your compass in your pocket, and then made sure that you stayed perfectly straight as you walked, you would not walk along this line of latitude. You would walk eventually towards the equator. And the same thing in the southern hemisphere. If you're here and you point your compass east, put it in your pocket and start walking, 
eventually you will find yourself not heading east anymore. Now the only place on the globe, and the only place on the flat earth, that that doesn't happen is on the equator. When you're on the equator and you look due east, you get your compass, you look due east, you put it in your pocket, and you walk in a perfectly straight line, you take out your compass later, you're still headed east. You don't need to continually correct yourself to the left or to the right. Uh, well, in this case, you know, to the left as you're walking due east. You're always headed due east when you're along the equator. There's no other line of latitude that that works for, only at the equator, and that's because the equator uh, happens to be one of the great circles around the globe. Now, the point of this little excursus is that in order for this to be an accurate map of the Earth, it would have to explain why you don't need to continually turn left to walk in a perfectly straight eastern easterly directed line along the equator. Um, the map fails to accurately represent what the Earth is like. Here, the equator is a circle. And yet, to walk along the equator, you never need to turn left or turn right. You only need to walk straight, due west or due east. Um, now, there is a map of the world where this does work. It's a globe. Because on a globe, on a three-dimensional globe, you can make the equator a straight line. And as you walk it, you do not need to turn to the left or to the right to keep going perfectly east. And no matter where you are along the equator, you can take out your compass and you'll still be facing perfectly due east or due west, depending which direction you go. So here's a little thought experiment. You know, Let's say you had 10,000 yardsticks and they're perfectly straight, okay? If you start in your backyard and you get your compass out and you face due east and you lay down one of your yardsticks and then you go straight along that yardstick, you're sure that yardstick is 90 degrees. It's, it's due east. And you put another yardstick in front of it and another yardstick in front of that and so on and so on and so on. And you can, you can show that you've made a straight line of yardsticks. If you put your compass at the end of that last yardstick, your heading will not be east. It won't be east. The only place it will still be east is along the equator. And that fact does not work on an azimuthal equidistant projection. This is why the azimuthal equidistant projection is not an accurate map of the flat earth.